It's fair to say there's a large pool of Collingwood supporters who are not happy with the acquisition of Harry Perriman because of the price tag that he came along with. Now, I'm going to try ease your mind and articulate why maybe we shouldn't be looking at it from that lens, okay? So first things first, we have to understand that Perriman did not cost any draft picks to come to Collingwood. Therefore, you pay a premium on the salary, right? GWS get a first round compensation pick for Harry Perriman, which suggests, and if you look at the stats with Perriman, he is we probably would have had to have given up a first round draft pick, which Colin would have fuck all of, right? We have pick 33, pick 48, pick 51 in this draft, right? The pond is small. There's multiple people fishing at the same pond, Port Adelaide pushing really hard for him. We've wanted him for a very long time. And you throw in the fact that Harry Perriman is a 150 game player, really consistent, really versatile. If you watch the videos I've done on him already, and 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 analysis wise you'll see he, he has he has a strong or a high defensive IQ that a lot of players don't have in this league and we need that at Collingwood right and then people say oh well we could have got Peatling for 500k okay so you want a 24 year old who is look we, we've we've had our given our raps to Peatling in the off season but the reality is he's 24 He's still a fringe player at GWS, or at least has had his breakout year this year. Perriman has had 100 games more than him, and he's only two years older. Peatling's only averaged 12 touches a game. He's taking up Perriman's midfield time, so it probably looks a little bit better on Peatling than it does on Perriman. So, and you have to give up picks for Peatling, right? So where you get him for 500k, you also have to give up picks, which Collingwood, once again, do not have. So if we look at it like that from the get-go, you understand why he's costing so much. And how, what, what kind of price tag do you put on the best role players at the Collingwood Football Club? Take, for example, Nathan Murphy, right? By the books, he's probably not worth 900K. But in our eyes, because we know what he's worth, we know what he's done and what he, what he did for us and how he looks or how Collingwood looks without him now, you pay him a million dollars to be back in that squad, right? To help Darcy Moore. Will Hoskin Elliott. You can't put a price tag on these players. Bo McCreary. Like, not going to be a massive fish in, in, a, in a free agency market. But because we know how, how important these role players are in the makeup of our side, which is team driven, they're worth their weight in gold. And Harry Perriman is exactly that. And I tip him to be the best role player for Collingwood and a little bit more, right? So we look at Perriman's year average, 21 disposals off the half back flank. Great. So we know that when with John Noble going to Gold Coast, we can play Perriman in the middle and in the back line, okay? So 75% kicking efficiency, uses the ball really well. And in a year where he plays, what, 50% midfield time? Let's have a look here. He played... 29% midfield time in 2022 and managed to accumulate 21 dispo or 22 disposals per game. That's off 30%, yeah? Let me just double check, make sure that's right. 30% sense of bounce attendances, right? Imagine if they get if that gets to a 50-60% mark where he's in the midfield. Who's to say he can't average 30 disposals? He's really good in the link-up chains. He knows where to find handball receives. He knows where to position himself to get the ball. He has a good work rate. He's not necessarily slow. Good ball user. He will be that player linking up in the defensive half, allowing Nick Dacos and Dugowie to be forward of centre. And to unleash those lads and give them less responsibility going back defensively is another thing you just can't put a price tag on. Can he be a better version of a, a Macintosh for Dustin Martin at the stoppages. Like these are the things we need to consider when we look at that price tag. The other thing which doesn't matter so much, but certainly would irk a few supporters if it went this way. We come into this market knowing that we need a tough midfielder, Perryman ticks that box, and a key size defender, which is the verdict is still out. Do we get Tomlinson? Do we get perhaps Frosty from Hawthorne, Laverde, 
there's these sort of players that are left on the market once Josh Battle, Barras, Mark Keane have all signed on either at their current club or they've moved on and haven't moved to Collingwood. Imagine we don't get Perryman and then we pick up scraps in delisted free agency. How's that going to be received by the Pies army? Not very well. So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't in that instance. And I think this sort of saves that conversation from happening. I'm not saying we signed Perryman solely to avoid that conversation, but that's just a little, I guess, a side piece to this whole discussion. I understand where the trauma comes from when we pay players like Grundy, Trelaw, Stevenson, Beams, big money in the past, and it's bit us in the ass relatively quickly from the moment we gave them the the bag, so to speak. So understand how we're reluctant in that sense, but just trust that Collingwood build their game around a team ethos, and that is what gets you flags. I mean, you look at the competition, it's so even right now. So you need great role players across the board. And I keep using the word role player. That's what Perriman's known as now. But I, I think there is a world where we live in, in 2025 where Perriman is averaging 25 touches a game, having a shot on goal. And if it's not that, he's doing much more that the stat sheet can't represent for Collingwood and Perryman. And I think we're really underrating and undervaluing how important it is to have Perryman who can also play off the halfback line. We know that if Perryman's in the midfield, Pendlebury side bottom can potentially play off the halfback line. Josh Dacos, does he move back to a wing? And Alan, does he come into the midfield? It gives us a lot of versatility that we once didn't have. And then if you throw Matthew Kennedy into this, our, I guess, midfield room changes from relying on fringe players like Bytel, Sullivan, Long. You take out two of those three and then you replace them with Kennedy and Harry Perryman. That's going to make a world of difference for Collingwood in 2025. We will revisit this. We will next year. But as I mentioned, have a look at the footage, the, the video that I posted saying, this is, the Colling- this is the game that made Collingwood buy Harry Perriman, and he does all the little things right. And you can't say that for a lot of players. Collingwood didn't do a lot of little things right last year defensively, not playing on your man, getting sucked into the contest, trying to intercept every ball that you possibly could, even though it's out of reach realistically. Perriman does all those things right. He can kick on both sides, or at least he, he can, he, his decision-making can be suspect that sometimes on his left foot, but I think he trusts his left foot so much that he gives himself that license. And you'll see he's confident with the ball, he wants the ball, he'll be a link-up player, he can do it all. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, and we'll go from there. Go Pies.